As violence in the occupied West Bank and East Jerusalem has increased, world leaders have urged for peace. Israeli forces killed nine Palestinians during Thursday's raid on the Janine refugee camp. One of the deadliest days in the occupied West Bank occurred on that same day when an Israeli soldier shot and killed a Palestinian man in the village of Alram, north of Jerusalem. On Friday, a Palestinian assailant killed seven people in occupied East Jerusalem close to a synagogue before being fatally shot. In the Palestinian neighborhood of Silwan, close to Jerusalem's ancient old city, a Palestinian shot and injured two Israelis on Saturday. Senior figures around the world have reacted as follows to the increase of violence in Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories. Antonio Guterres, UN Secretary General. According to Guterres's spokeswoman, the terrorist attack outside the Jerusalem synagogue that claimed seven lives was particularly abhorrent because it took place at a house of worship on the day commemorating the Holocaust. In the occupied West Bank, the UN Human Rights Office demanded a halt to the endless cycle of violence, adding that it was very concerned about the surge in Palestinian fatalities following one of the worst Israeli army raids in recent memory. Mahmoud Abbas, the leader of the Palestinians, declared three days of mourning for the victims of the Israeli raid on the Janine refugee camp. Flags would be lowered for the souls of the martyrs of the massacre committed by the Israeli occupation, he added when announcing three days of mourning. Joseph Burrell, the head of EU foreign policy. Following the appalling terrorist attack outside the synagogue, the head of the EU's foreign affairs and security policy strongly denounced acts of insane violence and hate. Also, Responding to the raid on the Janine refugee camp, he emphasized that lethal force must only be used as a last resort when it is strictly unavoidable to protect life, even if the EU acknowledged Israel's legitimate security concerns. Forcing all parties to reverse this spiral of violence and engage in meaningful efforts to restart peace negotiations, Burrell claimed that Israeli soldiers had killed 30 Palestinians in the West Bank since the year's beginning. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and U.S. President Joe Biden discussed the massacre in Jerusalem that left seven Israelis dead. According to the White House's readout of their phone conversation, he declared that the act was an attack against the civilized world. In addition to emphasizing the ironclad U.S. commitment to Israel's security, the U.S. President also promised that his staff would keep in close contact with their Israeli counterparts, Eli Cohen, the Foreign Minister of Israel. For all Israelis, this Shabbat was incredibly challenging. Cohen posted on Twitter, a very difficult Shabbat for all Israelis. I send my condolences to the families of those murdered in the dreadful attack on the synagogue and pray together with all Israelis for the recovery of the injured. We will act firmly to restore security to the citizens of Israel. On Twitter, French President Emmanuel Macron slammed the hateful synagogue attack. He continued, stating his thoughts were with the victims, their loved ones, and the people of Israel, stressing the spiral of violence must be avoided at all costs. Volodymyr Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, posted on Twitter that his nation felt Israel's anguish following the shootings in Jerusalem and that a Ukrainian woman was one of the victims of the synagogue shooting. Russia The Russian foreign ministry urged all parties to exercise maximum restraint and stated that it was closely monitoring the most recent developments. Olaf Scholz, the Chancellor of Germany, expressed his deep shock at the terrible Jerusalem attacks. The abominable shooting near the synagogue on Friday was denounced by the German Foreign Ministry, which also stressed the importance of dialogue and cooperation between Israel and the Palestinian authorities to eliminate terror.